Hi there folks, welcome back to Rule of Thumb. Today, I am actually here on behalf of Angie's Pantry. Angie has some personal things going on in her life and she was unable to find time to be able to film her third video for Jarred Up January. And I said, you know what? You're my sister and I'll jump in for you because that's what the canny community is about. It's about everybody sticking together, everybody helping each other out, you know, being able to call on each other for questions, for assistance, whatever the situation may be. It's a community of people that care. And a lot of the people I know feel the same way. Not everyone, but you know, <laughs> most people. So she was really in a bind. She didn't know what she was gonna do. She had to travel out of town, you know, taking all of her stuff with her to film a video would have been a ridiculous idea. So I said, no, I got you covered. So you're gonna get two videos in a row for me. You're gonna get this one today. And tomorrow is my actual day for Jarred Up January, so you're going to get another one tomorrow. So, double dose of rule of thumb. Today, I'm going to bring you along, and I'm going to can mirepoix. What's that you say? Mirepoix is the French word for, you know, honestly, I don't know exactly what it translates to. But, what it means in food is carrots, celery, and onions. So I'm going to can carrots, celery, and onions together in a jar. And carrots, celery, and onion is basically the base for any soup, any stew, casseroles, anything you're going to braise. I mean, most recipes call for you to saute carrots, celery, and onions as the starter for anything that you want to add flavor to. It's a base flavor. So I thought I'm going to be halfway there by just canning the three items together. I can pour the whole jar into the pan. The liquid that's in the jar will carry some of the flavor. It'll condense down and it's going to make for a great way to start a million recipes. So I'm going to show you what I'm working with and show you what I'm going to do. And we'll move on from there. Okay, folks. So it's pretty simple what I'm working with. I already told you basically what it is. I got a bowl of celery, a bowl of, I bought pre-shredded carrots, and a container of onions, and I'm going to layer these into pint jars, top them off with water, and get them canned. So, I am going to get set up here, and then I'll bring you back, show you filling a couple jars so you can see what's going on, and then we'll move on from that. Okay, folks, we're back. Um, so, basically, this is super simple. I'm going to use my hands. I just washed my hands, so good clean hands and I'm just going to layer this into the jar and try and go about equal parts. Um, so I'm going to do the carrot first. So I want, you know, about a third of the jar of carrots. Then I'm going to do the onion. And this works out to about a good handful for me. So I want to kind of judge by that. Now, once I put water in here, I may find that I have a little bit more room, but I don't think so, because I'm going to kind of push this down in there. And so you can see there, you see that jar? So you got basically three layers there, and I'm just going to use my tea kettle, although I didn't heat it up because this is cold vegetables. I freshly washed the jars. Um, but they're not hot. So, and, so I'm going to start everything in a cold canner, cold jars, cold food, cold water, cold canner. So I'm going to do a little pokey joe, as mouse toes would say. It's all about the pokey joe. All right, so I got that. Looks like I could use another dab of water. And it's as simple as that. I'm going to go get, get a lid and a ring on this. Um, let me show you filling one more jar here. So I'll go ahead and get some carrots. And some onion. And some celery. And if you get a little bit more of one or the other in each jar, well, so be it. You know, it's not the end of the world. So, there's another one layered up. Let's get us a little liquid in there. Take our pokey joe. Put 
right down on the sides there. I talked to mouse toes because I had some canning questions and one of the things I asked was about evacuation and headspace and she told me a no secret it ain't hard it's just the pokey joe she said it's all about the pokey joe and you know what I trust what she says so that's how we did this I'm gonna get a lid and a ring on these get them in the canner and then I'll bring you folks back and let you know what the next step is. Hey folks, I just wanted to bring you back quick because I'm sure somebody was out there saying, Hey stupid, you forgot to wipe the rims of your jars. And I didn't forget, I just, you know, I take it for granted at this point that everybody knows that. But you know what, if you're a new canner, you might not. So I got a little vinegar in a bowl here with a paper towel. Give those rims a good wipe. You want to make sure there's no debris on them so that you are able to get a good seal. And then you put your lid on and then your ring. And into the canner so just wanted to make sure everybody knew that it is very important to wipe down the rims of your jars hi there folks so I brought you back to talk about the canning process for this because this is not a approved and approved canning method okay um, the only thing carrots are an approved item to can by the National Center for Home Food Preservation. Um, it's 30, I think 35 minutes for pints for carrots. Celery has been approved, not approved, maybe approved. It's been kind of all over the board. Part of it was there wasn't money there to support density testing, so they weren't sure and they took it off. and. So I've read a lot of material about that. Onions, there really isn't any recommended canning for onions. Not so much because they can't, can, can't be canned, because obviously there are many recipes that use onions to can, like beef stew and soups and stuff like that. They typically don't recommend canning them because it's just as easy to freeze them, and also they can brown in the canning process. For the use that I'm using them for, I'm not really that concerned about it. So I went around, I did a bunch of research, um, and the best I could come up with was about 35 minutes for the carrots based on what the you know USDA says. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to go, according to one random source that I found, and they said 45 minutes, which I figure is 10 minutes above carrots. So I'm going to pressure can mine for 45 minutes. So what I'm going to do is I have them in the canner. I'm going to bring my canner up, let it vent for 10 minutes. I'll put my regulator on, bring it up to the 11 pounds of pressure that I need for my canner. And I'm going to can it for 45 minutes. So I just kind of wanted to go through it because I'm sure there's people that are out there flipping through a book and saying, I don't see onions, I don't see celery, you know. This is one of those things where you have to do your research. You have to decide what's right for you and your family. You have to decide what you feel comfortable with based on your own knowledge base, based on other people that you know. I happen to know people that have canned celery and have loved it. Heather at the Needy Homesteader has done it. Bev at our Half Acre Homestead has done it. These are people that I know and that I trust. Um, so I've canned carrots before many, many times, and I've used onions in many of my recipes. So again, I'm using some common sense. I'm going to give myself an extra 10 minutes just as a buffer. And that's what I've chosen to do for me and our safety. So I just wanted to bring you back, explain to you what my process was and how I came about doing that. And then I will bring you folks back when these come out of the canner. Okay, folks, we're back. The canner has come down off of pressure. I cracked the lid. I let it sit for five minutes. And now I'm ready to get these jars out of the canner. So wanted to show you guys one of these jars up close and personal you can see carrots celery and onions still in there perfect one inch headspace and this is going to be a great start to a lot of soups and stews in the future so i'm going to finish getting these out of the canner but i wanted to thank you folks for coming along on this experimental journey today i hope you enjoyed it I hope I was a good substitute for Angie, for all of her subscribers out there. I hope I uh, did Angie proud. Again, I'll be back tomorrow with my own video. So I will see you folks then. Come back and see me. As always, I hope you had a great day.